Well, hi there. My name is Sean McNeil, and I work here in the finance department here at Sunset International Bible Institute. We're going to talk today a little bit about an investor that we read about in Matthew chapter 13. Now, talking about investments, have you heard the word diversification? Maybe you have a IRA or a 403B or a 401k or something like that. You were probably advised to diversify your portfolio. Well, all that means is to invest in a bunch of different things, different companies, different instruments or whatever, to minimize the risk that you take. If you put all your eggs in one basket, like in one company, and that company goes belly up, you're in trouble because you've lost all your wealth. And that's bad. So what would it take for you to invest in just one thing? Well, that would have to be a pretty good thing, wouldn't it? It would need to be, number one, backed by something. Number two, it would need to be durable. Number three, it would need to have a big payoff. Number four, it needs to pay a regular dividend. Well, this investor that we're going to read about in Matthew is from the parable about the pearl merchant. This is found in chapter 13, verses 45 and 46. It's real short. It says, this is Jesus talking. He says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. Okay, so what do we know about this pearl merchant? Well, that was his profession, so he must have known something about pearls. Uh, a few years ago, I bought my wife some pearls for our anniversary, and I guarantee I know absolutely nothing about, about what I was doing, and uh, I had to rely on the advice of uh, the salesperson, which is dangerous sometimes. Uh, but an expert does know the value. An expert can tell the difference between a cheap pearl and a valuable one, or a, a good one and a fake one. So this pearl merchant must have known what he was looking for. Um, secondly, he was actively looking for pearls when he found this pearl of great price. He didn't accidentally stumble on it. He was actively looking. He was probably seeking a lot of pearls when he found the special one. And he recognized the value and sold everything he had to obtain it. Now, it doesn't sound like he just spent his investment money. Sounds like he spent everything um, because the pearl was of such value that it was worth it to him to do that. Well, obviously, Jesus is talking about the kingdom of heaven here. Well, does the kingdom of heaven fit the bill for the kind of investment we were talking about earlier? Well, I bet it does. First of all, the kingdom of God is backed by something. Uh, what I mean is, you know, when we have a savings account, don't we trust that the bank's going to be there to pay us back? Or if we invest in a bond, that the company's going to be there to pay us back? Or, or even a government bond, that's only as good as the word of the government that backs that bond. What about the kingdom of heaven? That's backed by the word of God. Does God keep his promises? I think we can come up with multiple examples in the Old Testament where, where he certainly does. 1 John 1, 9 says, God is faithful and just. I think we can have full confidence in the Lord. Second of all, the kingdom of God is durable. It's not like the stock market that goes up and down or the economy. Um, it's not some depreciating asset that today is worth something, but in the future it's not going to be worth anything. No, the kingdom of God is durable. It lasts forever. It lasts longer than our lives. It's eternal. Uh, 1 Peter 1, 3-4 says, says, In his great mercy he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and to, into an inheritance, listen to this, that can never perish, spoil, or fade, kept in heaven for you. Doesn't that sound like a good durable investment? It certainly does to me. Thirdly, the kingdom of God pays a great dividend at the end. Wouldn't you love to find an investment that 
that multiplies whatever you put into it um, infinitely? Of course you would. You know, a, a stock like Apple, uh, if you adjust the price for splits and things like that, the original price is like 25 cents compared to now. That'd be a pretty good investment if you if you bought that at the very beginning. But man, the kingdom of God is worth so much more than that. Um, 1 Corinthians 2.9 says, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. We can't even imagine how great the kingdom of heaven will be. Fourthly, the kingdom of God pays a great periodic dividend. You know, savings accounts will pay you interest maybe once a month or once every three months. Bonds a couple times a year. Stocks pay dividends every so often. But doesn't being a member of the kingdom of God, doesn't that pay dividends constantly? Aren't we blessed by our fellowship with other Christians? Aren't we blessed in our, our worship to the Lord? Aren't we blessed by the comfort of knowing that, that God is never going to leave us or forsake us, that we can have full confidence in the Lord? All of those are blessings that you just can't even put a value on. They're so great. So, so yes, I think the kingdom of God does pay a periodic dividend also. That's here on earth. Well, so now we know how great the pearl is, but what about the price? Well, the price is everything. It costs everything. And I'm not just talking about money here. The kingdom of God costs our whole lives. We need to dedicate our whole life to it. Everything we value. Because the value of the kingdom of God is worth infinitely greater than anything we have here on earth. Is that scary? A little bit. There's another parable in the New Testament about the rich young ruler where Jesus said, hey, I saw you have met all the commandments. Now sell everything you have and dedicate it to the poor. The guy couldn't do it. He didn't see the value in it. He walked away. But we don't want to be like that. We want to dedicate all that we have to the Lord. And I know that's not easy. Camels don't fit through needles easily. But I also know that some of the people that are probably listening to this have done exactly that. I know we have students here at SIBI that have given up careers and homes and, and, and moved here and they've given up everything to study the, the Bible to be, to be ministers. And I know we have people on our faculty here, here at SIBI that have, have dedicated their youth and their energy and their lives to, to ministry and to mission work. And they've given up everything for the kingdom of God. And we still hear the names of some of our heroes around here that, that have gone on to be with the Lord, that have, have worked so hard in the kingdom, you know, building the school and, and, and doing mission work. And they're enjoying the kingdom of God even now. So, so maybe you know people who, who didn't invest in the kingdom of God. Maybe they invested their lives into something much worse. Maybe, I don't know, drugs, alcohol, bad relationships, or maybe just things that don't last. Well, it's not too late for them to invest in the kingdom of God also. It's costly. It'll cost their whole lives. But don't we know that the kingdom of God is worth it? That Paul describes our our lives as the problems we have here are light and momentary compared to the kingdom of heaven. It's worth it. And that, my friends, is the message that we have to get out to this world. We have to let them know the value of the kingdom of heaven. Thanks.